Good day. Welcome to another session of all accountants and tutorials. Today we are going to look at the element of cost structure, how costs are arranged in the process of ascertaining cost. So we are going to look at the structure of the elements of cost, and then that is that is going to help us to prepare a cost statement in order to be able to ascertain our cost. All right. Now this topic is very basic and may not look too important for some people but when you are able to understand this concept that i'm going to explain you are going to use that to prepare job costing and then some other important costing areas so it's very very important now when we say the elements of cost uh, elements of cost we have three main elements for cost cost has three elements we have material costs as the first element, we have labor costs as another element, and then we have expenses. Now, these are three main elements of cost material costs, labor costs, and expenses. Now, we need to understand these three very well. What is material cost? Material cost refers to the cost of the physical substances that are used in the production of goods and services. Okay? Now, it is different from materials. Now, we can also say material cost is the cost of materials, literally. But then, in the time I'm trying to explain this to my students, I always want to point out to the fact that there is a difference between materials and the difference between and the material cost. Yes, materials are different from material cost. So that when you go to a cost or management accounting exam, and you are asked to explain materials. It is different from when you are asked to explain material cost. And I know a lot of students confuse the two. Materials refers to the physical substances that are used in the production of goods and services, whether direct or indirect. Now, material cost is the cost of those physical substances that are used. So, materials come as physical substances without a cost. But when we say materials cost, we are referring to the cost of materials, the cost of the physical substances that are used in the production of goods and services. And so next time when you meet a person that is asking you to define either material or materials cost, you should be able to know which one you are really applying. The next one is about labor. Labor has to do with, there is a difference between labor and labor cost, like just as material. Labor has to do with the human efforts, okay? Human efforts that are contributed towards production of goods and services. That is the labor. But when we say labor cost, we are referring to cost of labor. So the cost of those human efforts that are contributed towards the production of goods and services. That is what we call labor cost. So know that there is a difference between labor and labor cost. A lot of students use this interchangeably. Labor, material, without just referring to whether they are talking about cost or just the labor itself. So labor has to do with human efforts. Labor cost has to do with the cost of the human effort. And then finally we talk about expenses. Now there is a standard definition for expenses. But then I just want you to understand that just as law, well, we don't want to make room for mistakes so or errors. Just as law, well, we try that we don't make room for people to bring in things that are controversial. So we define expenses in custom as any other cost apart from material cost and labor cost. Okay, because we are talking about elements of cost and we say cost has three elements. So if this is cost, material becomes one material cost, then labor cost is another. Now the third one, means that if there is a particular cost that is not material nor labor automatically it should be called expenses that is the meaning all right now in each of these three cases we have direct nature and indirect nature okay so we have direct expenses and then we have indirect expenses we have direct material cost and then we have indirect material cost we have direct labor costs and then we have indirect labor costs. 
These are things that should be understood by every student doing cost and management accounting. Now, when we look at the direct and indirect nature of cost, I have already explained that in cost classification. It's about the traceability. And so, direct material cost and direct labor cost. Now, direct material cost is the cost. You see, let me even ignore the cost and talk about direct material and indirect material. And just as I was explaining from this point, the same way I would say that there is a difference between direct material and direct material cost. They are not the same. Direct materials, we are just referring to the materials that are traced, can be traced easily to the production. But when we talk about direct material cost, now cost has been introduced. So we are referring to cost of those direct materials. So let us take note, because many of us use these terms interchangeably and we should be very mindful of what we write in the exam hall. It's very, very important because the marking scheme can make whatever you have written useless if you are not careful. Now, direct materials refers to those materials that are traceable, we can easily be traced, or the main components that form part of the main components of the product, the finished product. Okay, so if you are manufacturing, let's say, a motor vehicle or a car, you are going to use metals, you are going to use plastics, you are going to use rubbers. All those materials will become direct materials because at the end of the product uh, and manufacturing process, you will see the metal as part of the car, you see the glass. All those ones are direct. The indirect materials in this case will be glue. That may be used to stick two materials together. You can talk about um, oil for greasing. You can talk about some other things which does not necessarily form part of the visible end product of the process. And so direct materials are those materials which can be easily traced to the product or the cost unit. But when we talk about indirect materials, indirect materials are those materials that are more or less like supporting materials for production. They do not necessarily form part visibly of the finished product or service. So that is about materials. But I'm now going to talk about the cost of those. So if we say direct material cost, direct material costs are simply cost of direct materials. They are cost of materials that are traceable to the product. And then we have indirect material cost as cost of those other materials which are supporting materials but not traceable to the finished product. So these are the differences. Then we can also talk about direct labor and indirect labor. Now direct labor, you see in, in an organization or a factory setting, when we work in a company where we manufacture goods and services in a factory and we have administrative staff, usually the direct labor are those human efforts that are being contributed in the factory and are, are directly involved in the production of the goods and services. Those are your direct labor. So direct labor has to do with the human efforts that are traceable to the production. But indirect labor has to do with those human efforts that are more or less like a supporting human efforts, like the administrative staff who are not necessarily working in the factory. Okay, that is why the wages that are paid to factory workers are called direct wages. But those that are paid for administrative staff are indirect because they cannot be traced directly to the product that is being produced. They only offer support and services. So direct labor cost has to do with the cost of the labor that is directly attributable to the production process. And then the indirect has to do with those costs that cannot be traced. The cost of those labor or human efforts that cannot be traced to the production. And then we come to expenses. Direct expenses are expenses that are traceable to the production process. And then the indirect expenses are expenses that are not traceable to the production process. So these are just a recap of what we have. We may have done from cost classification, but I may not have gone too deep as I'm trying to go now. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to use this to explain to you the elements of cost structure, give you the format, and they will be out of here. Okay. Now, we can see from what I just explained that for all the three main elements of cost, the material cost, labor cost, and expenses, we have direct nature for each of them and we may have an indirect nature. Now, all the direct nature, some that is called prime cost, and then the indirect costs are called overheads. So we are going to try and calculate our cost 
with the idea that we will first have to estimate our prime cost before we look at the overhead. So let me just use this tabulation again. We have direct materials costs and then we can also have direct labor costs and then direct expenses. Okay. We can also have indirect material costs, we can have indirect labor costs and then indirect expenses. Now look at what I'm trying to do. If I add up my direct material cost and my indirect material cost, I'm going to have total material cost in that order. If I add up my direct labor cost and the indirect labor cost, it's going to give me total labor cost. If I add up the direct expenses to the indirect expenses, I'm going to have total expenses. I'm just trying to tabulate something to make it very simple for you. Now let us try adding horizontally as well. Now, if I add my direct material cost to my direct labor cost and then my direct expenses, these are three direct costs. So I'm going to have what we call prime costs. So prime cost can be defined as the, as the aggregate of all direct costs. So direct material cost plus direct labor cost plus direct expenses will give me my prime cost. Then I will add up the indirect, indirect material cost, indirect labor cost, indirect expenses. It's also going to give me my overheads. And therefore, if I add my prime cost to my overhead, it's going to give me total cost. Okay? Just as when I add total material cost to total labor cost to total expenses, it's still going to give me the total cost. So, in arriving at the total cost, you have so many angles you can go. That is what I'm just trying to let you understand. If I go this way, get my prime cost first, go the other way, get my overhead first, and I add my prime cost to my overhead. I'm going to get a total cost. The same way, I can decide to go this way by taking my total material cost, total labor cost, total expenses, without splitting them into direct and indirect nature. I'll just add all the totals and then I'll still get my total cost. So these are two different ways we can arrive at the total cost. I'm still trying to expatiate and then try and explain to you how we are going to arrive at the element of cost structure. If you understand these things that I'm explaining, job costing and those other topics that are related to this will be a thing of the past. As far as the challenges are concerned. Okay, so now, this is the last but one lap. Let us look at the final lap. The final lap is interesting. These overheads can be split into two. As for the prime cost, there is nothing about it. And normally, Prescribably, we go this way to get our total cost. We don't go this way. Professionally, we go this way. So we, most of the time, in every aspect of the costing or the management accounting that you are doing, you are going to first have to look for your prime cost before you add your overheads to get the total cost. So this way is more acceptable than this way. All right. Now, getting your prime cost, there is nothing or there is no big deal about that. When we come to overheads, we are normally required to split overheads into two. So we may have overheads that are related to the factory, even though they are indirect, but they will be more related to the factory than overheads that are non factory. So it means that we have two main types of overheads. We have factory overheads and then we have non factory overheads. What are factory overheads? Factory overheads will also be called production overheads. And then non factory overheads are non production overheads. So these are the two. So we have factory overheads and then we have non factory overheads. Factory overheads are those kind of overheads that, even though they are indirect costs, they are incurred in the factory. They are in the factory still, even though they don't form part of the main product. So they are not direct, but it is still in the factory. But non factory overheads are non-production overhead are those overheads that are incurred outside the factory so even though it's in the same company for example but they may be administrative overheads uh, selling overheads distribution overheads and general overheads all those overheads that are not related in the factory like administrative selling and distribution overheads and all that those overheads are incurred outside the factory and so they are called non-production overheads now we are still looking at total cost and I've told you that prime cost plus your total overheads will give you the total cost. 
But now that we have been able to split overhead into factory and non-factory, then this is the big thing now. When we add prime cost to only the factory overhead, it's going to give us a new thing. Before we add the non-factory to get the total cost. So we want to find our production cost or cost of production. Or we want to find our product cost, that is if it is per unit. And we are saying that when we add all the overheads to the prime cost, you have total cost. But if you add only the factory overheads to the prime cost, it's going to give you production cost. Then after adding the non-factory to the two again, you have the total cost. So there is a difference between production cost and total cost. Production cost excludes non-factory overheads. And many of us didn't know that. Production cost excludes non-factory or non-production overheads. But total cost includes all overheads. So the difference between production cost and total cost is that total cost is inclusive and there is non-production overhead included in total cost. But in production cost, there is no non-factory overhead. And so I'm just going to make it a tabular form to give you a cost structure. But you need to understand that prime cost plus factory overhead is going to give you your production cost. And when you add the non-factory overhead, then you have your total cost. I'm sure this is understandable now. All right. So for when we are working to, I'm going to give you the format or the element of cost structure in, in format so that we know how to estimate. Because this is for cost estimation or cost accumulation. So element of cost structure. Let me show guys. So I'm going to begin with my prime cost. I have to first get my prime cost. And I've told you that you bring up your direct material cost. Then you add up your direct labor cost, which is usually factory wages. And then your direct expenses, if there is any. Then the figure you have here, you call it prime cost. I'm sure this one is understandable because I have explained it extensively. There is overheads, but I've told you we have two. So let us first list our factory overheads. Now, factory overheads could be more than one. It's not necessarily true that because I just wrote one one for each of them, I have to just write only one. We will have this as factory overheads and list as many as we have from the question. Then we come to non-factory, we list what we know. And then we have our total cost. And so let me just write only two of them. So factory overhead becomes next. So under factory overhead, we have we can have uh, something like factory power. Then we can also have depreciation of plants. Because the plant is usually used in a factory. So when your plant is depreciating, then it becomes a factory overhead. Almost all the overheads that begin with factory are factory overheads, like factory rent, factory light, factory heating, and all that, including depreciation of plants. That's very important. So let's assume these are the only two factory overheads. We add them in break. So we add our factory overheads to the prime cost. And then the final figure we have after that becomes our production cost or cost of production. Or if it is in a case where you are being for only one product, then you call it product cost. So now we have our production cost. And how did we ascertain the production cost? The production cost was ascertained by adding factory overhead to prime cost. We still have non-factory overheads to talk about. And so let us now come there. Non-production overhead. So we can list them. We have selling overheads, distribution overheads. Sometimes they are combined as selling and distribution. Then administrative and general overheads. So these are the main thread. All other overheads that are manufacturing can be categorized under this thread. So we'll look at that. So when we add the three of them, 
we have total non-factory overhead to be added. And then we can now have a final figure that we are going to call total cost. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the element of cost structure. We are going to use this format for a lot of things in costing. And I'm going to use that for most of the topics ahead. Because we have job costing, contract costing, and some others ahead. Process costing, they are all ahead of us. Now, we are going to use this especially for most topics. And so what I want you to do from this video is to master the concept, understand how we accumulate costs, that we don't just add up anyway, anyhow. We have so many uh, uh, steps to follow. We first have to find our prime costs, then our factory overheads to get the production costs. And when we add the non-production or non-factory overheads, we get the total cost. So if you are asked that, what is the difference between production costs and total costs, you should be able to explain that the difference between production costs and total costs is that total cost includes non-factory overheads, production cost does not factor that because it's not incurred in the factory. So we don't add that to our production cost. Another important aspect that I want you to know, I want you to understand this definition very well now. So it means that production cost begins from direct materials or up to the factory overheads. Then everything becomes total cost. Now, there is another cost called conversion cost, which I want to draw your attention to. So, we have conversion cost, we have production cost or product cost, and then we have total cost. What is the difference? Now, we all can understand and define total cost. I'm sure we can also define production cost now. But, what is conversion cost? There is a difference between conversion cost and production cost, and it's just one. The difference is the direct material. Now, when we say production cost, direct material, direct labor, direct expenses are all inclusive up to the overheads. But when we say conversion cost, conversion cost, we want to factor the cost we have incurred in converting the direct material into finished goods. Because the production must give us an end product, which is the finished product. And conversion cost is concerned with the cost that has been incurred in the factory in the factory in order to convert the direct material into the finished product and because we are interested in the cost that was incurred in the conversion we do not factor the material cost itself the material cost the direct material cost is there but we just want to look at other costs that we are using converting that direct material into the finished product so conversion cost will begin from direct labor cost up to the factory overhead the last end of the factory overhead and then the production cost actually includes the direct material itself. So production cost includes direct material. Conversion cost excludes the direct material cost. That is the difference between production cost and conversion cost. So conversion cost is the cost that is incurred in converting direct material into finished goods. Whereas production cost is the cost or the aggregate of prime cost and factory overhead. So that is the main difference between conversion cost and production cost. I'm sure your understanding has come and is coming alive very well. So this will be the end of our lesson or maybe our first lesson on elements of cost structure. It may be only this video, but I'm going to take job costing and then we'll build this up from here. Remember to subscribe to this channel if this is your first time. Share this video if you have been blessed. Like and comment and let us know your views. And then I'm sure that we shall grow together and be successful together. Until we meet again another time. For another video, it is bye for now.